Welcome now. Welcome everybody from Facebook joins on every day. Happy Fourth of July weekend. I want to start out by saying with everything that we're seeing on TV, I still believe we live in the best country in the whole world. Can we get an amen? My dad was in World War II. He defended the country. Of course, his job, every job was important, but all his job was, I'll never forget, he was stationed in Italy, was to load up a supply truck, drive 80 miles, drop it off, load up supply and drive it back. He said he did that for some, almost three years. He said he enjoyed it. He got to see the country, and that was his job. I don't care what military guys did. Let's, let's thank some of our military guys that are in here for what they did, right? Right? You're the, you were in the Air Force, right? And who else is a military guy in here? What, what, what Navy? Anybody else? All right, yeah, what were you? Marine Corps. That's what my mother was in, Marine Corps. She was, she was in the uh, Korean War. She was stationed in the Korean War, yep, in the early 50s. My mother was in the 50s. Yeah, I can imagine that. We'll give a round of applause for the Marines, too. Amen. All of them. But you know what? Every time I turn on the TV, let's be, let's be straight, okay? It's somebody trying to get somebody to go to court. Somebody's suing the other one. We got hidden tapes. This one isn't right. This one's, are you guys getting tired of it like I am? I just, I just want to let's move on, do what we got to do, get this country going. How many know, but my thing is, I still believe God puts it back in the church's hands. Because I've said it before, my hope is not in the White House, it's in the church house. Can I get an amen? And I believe we need to pray for our country, we need to stand for righteousness, and I believe that. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty of which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. How many know there's some changes that are going on? And there's been a tremendous divide in our nation. But on July 4th, this Tuesday, I want to let you know, in 1776, we had a lot of men and women that shed blood so we could be here and be free in the land that we're in. Thank God we're still free. Amen? And all those people laid their lives down so we could have our independence. And there's been a lot of bloodshed. Our history has made us who we are today. This is where we're at. I believe I live in the greatest country in the whole nation. And I believe our responsibility is to always protect Israel. Come on, man. We're always to lift up Israel. We're to pray. God said, you bless her, I'll bless you. You curse her, I'll curse you. But that's another. That's a whole other thing, another time, uh, another message. But I don't want you to get discouraged because I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to open up my heart today as a pastor. Over the last 15 or 20 years, I've seen some of the stupidest, weirdest stuff go on anti-God stuff I've ever seen, okay? We, we, we ended up, I'm just going to preach, we ended up doing same-sex marriage. Everybody put that up. They were all doing it. And Paula said something. We don't condemn people that are doing something, but we don't agree with the lifestyle if it doesn't line up with what the Word of God says. Can I get an amen? He made Adam and Eve. Come on, somebody. And that's what he wants us to do. Now, there are people that are nice, that are the other, but I've seen it go to where we're getting everything's starting to change i've seen drugs run rampant we got people that can walk in a store and shoplift and you're not allowed to do anything what happened boy in my day if you shoplift the store owner could knock you due to the ground and fill you up and wait you and hold it down citizens arrest citizens arrest help me out drop you down now you're not allowed to do a lot of stuff anywhere i'm watching it all change so what are we supposed to do what are we supposed to do when we see that kind of stuff God tells us, do not lose hope, because the Bible talks in Matthew 24, and if you read in some of the beginning of Revelation, you will see that these things are going to happen, and the Bible calls them the beginning of birth pains, so what's the church supposed to do? Still stand for righteousness. Let me tell you something. I believe every bit of the Word of God is still alive today. Can we get an amen? And ain't nothing going to change. It's not going to be shaken. As long as the church stands on Jesus, believes that Jesus is Lord, He's the only way into heaven. Come on, somebody. Preaches the gospel, loves on people. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be nice. But we don't have to agree with everything that's going on. I, I love Saturday morning, morning cartoons. Anybody remember Saturday morning cartoons? Were they not the best? Come on, were they not the best? For you younger people, you missed out, okay? Guess who I saw on, on uh, the reels of an old tape 
Johnny Carson interviewing Mel Blank. Does anybody know who Mel Blank is? Raise your hand if you remember Mel Blank. Who does not know who Mel Blank is? Raise your hand. Oh, we got one over there. We got another one. It's okay if you don't know. Mel Blank was the voices of Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes, Bugs, Yosemite Sam, Tweety Bird, Sylvester. You know how he ended up getting those voices? He was hospitalized when he was 20 years old. I'm watching the interview. It was so cool. One interview, he said, I was laying there in the hospital bed, and I couldn't go anywhere. So at 7 in the morning, after I ate my breakfast, I decided to many different night. So he had been practicing and trying all past 7, all the way to midnight. He had written down four voices he could do. When he was in Hollywood in the time, he did all those kind of voices. And he was phenomenal at what he did. But what he did was he took a tragedy that had happened to him and turned it around and made it a blessing and became a man that did most of the cartoon voices when I were growing up. But the cartoons we have now cuss. They'll say what nasty words. They'll have sexual innuendos. That's where we are. All right? But what does God say? God tells us, do not lose hope. You know why? Because we were born, watch this, for such a time as this. Come on, man. I'm not here by mistake between these years. I was born in 1961, and, you know, <laughs> 1961, okay. Anyways, but you're here for such a time as this. Lori, you're here for such a time as this. Zane, you're here for such a time as this. You're here for such. There's a reason that God knew when we would be born that we would be here for such a time as this. So we don't have to lose hope. It's time for the church to get up, walk in joy, and say, watch what our God can do. We're going to stand for righteousness. Can I get an amen? amen? I still believe we live in the greatest country in the whole world, and that will never change. And my parents fought for this country. My brother did. He was in the United States Navy. <clears throat> my nephews did. Luke 19, 13 says, So he called ten of his servants and delivered to them ten men about three months' salary and said to them, do the business till I come. What it actually says is, occupy till I come back. Now look, we are to occupy. What does occupy mean? Keep doing what we're doing. Keep standing for what we're standing. I don't care. I, I had a, there was a leader one time that says we're no longer a Christian nation. Yes, we are. I'm here. What about you? This thing was founded on Jesus Christ. And I really believe that this nation, how do we get back? we got to pray. we got to ask God. And you know what? It's not enough to pray. Just live your lifestyle for the Lord. Be nice to people. If somebody says, no, well, this is what the Word says. No, I, I disagree with you. The Word says you can't do it. No, the Word says this. You know what? I ran into a lady yesterday. Goes to church. And <laughs> we're sitting in this store. And she says to me, oh, yeah, I go to church. I, and she told me, what church, praise the Lord. I know the pastor. He and I have been friends for 30 years. She goes, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes on. Now, th now on the weekend, you guys going to get your beer and your stuff and give it out. Oh, now, for me, some people drink liquor. I don't drink liquor, okay? I'm gonna, she goes, well, I just drink it in moderation. So I looked at her and said, well, is it okay if I smoke marijuana in moderation? She goes, what do you mean? I said, I believe that God has called the church to be different, okay? And as a pastor, I want to be an example. Now, some people drink. They think it's okay. But you know what? If that's the case, what would you say to an alcoholic when it's communion time? Why do we drink grape juice? Why don't we just drink regular wine? Because it would fire things back. I think the enemy has stolen so much and crept into the church so much that we can get away with so much. We try to get on to, we get to as close as much as what are we allowed to do before it's bad? What? I think we need to examine ourselves as a church and say, God, what have you called me to do? Bible says, come out from among them and be separate and be different. If we want the nation to change, we got to be living examples of Christ, living epistles, what the Word tells us. Listen, the blood of Jesus set me free. Come on, man. I, I come here to share this morning. It's Fourth of July weekend, man. I love the country. I love. Let me tell you, I love jokes. I love. To, I love uh, watching TV. I love sports. I'm just as normal as anybody else. But there's a part of me that won't allow certain things to happen. When my children were growing up, and even to this day, when we're watching TV, if they use God's name in vain, we turn the TV up. I don't watch anymore. If you want to, that's fine. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit's convicted me of, and I don't want to do it because I don't want somebody to take my God and say his name in a different way because I want to let you know right now to everybody watch. 
God is not the dammer. He's the life giver. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said that he has come to give life and give it more abundantly. He said, I came that your joy might be made complete. Come on, man. That's the kind of God we serve. That's why he said, don't be discouraged. I'm with you. I've never left you. You're going to make it. Stand for righteousness. And sometimes when you stand for righteousness, you get condemned. People think you're a goody two-shoes. No, I'm not a good. It's my neighbor at Christmas time. Great people. We, they live together. The people over there, they're, they're nice as can be. We love on them, okay? We agree lifestyle. You should be married. But at Christmas time, they brought us over a big bottle of wine. I said, boy, you know, I really appreciate that. But we don't drink over there. Oh, you don't? No, I just don't. No. I said, but you know what? Can you give me a hug? I want a hug. I just thank you for thinking of us. There's a different way than saying, oh, we don't do that. You know, that's both of you. You're know, you living together. You're going to go. They already know how we stand for Christ. Can I get an amen? They already know the righteousness. And I pray that my witness, the Bible says in Psalm 71, 7, my life is an example to those that are outside. It has to be an example. That don't mean any, you're better than anybody else. What it means is that you've made a commitment to Christ, and Christ lives in you, and you want to do the best you can, because I want to lead as many people to Jesus as I can. I want to, listen, I want to boycott hell, help me out, and populate heaven. Can I get an amen? And I'm not going to condemn my country every time something happens wrong. I'm going to say, God's going to get the land. We're going to get, I guess my job's not done. We've got to keep doing more than we do. We've got to keep ministering the gospel. We've got to get lives changed, hearts changed. That's what we need to do. It's time for the church to start, to not stop evangelizing, not stop reaching out, but to love people. Listen, this past week, Pastor Zane goes to Tuesday night over at our sister church, City Life in Bradenton, and is out there, and he preaches to... 40 to 50 and sometimes 100 homeless people that come to get food and he preaches a 10 minute message and they're getting saved but after the service was it after the service or during it was after the service all of a sudden there's a homeless lady with her dog attacks another lady that's there rips the lady's face is all over it biting it they had to call the ambulance to get it and it came there but you know what we're out there ministering the gospel and sometimes satan is going to show up to try to disrupt what you're doing but thank god zane was there they stopped it they got the dog out of there and they, they didn't even take the dog away that's why i don't understand when well, when animal control you thought they'd take the dog away but the dog ripped the whole lady's face she got stitches how many know we, when you go on the territory of the enemy he's just not going to go hide but you can go take authority and stand for righteousness you served in the military you served in the military that doesn't mean your enemy's going to run and hide sometimes you got to get the bombshells out and fight back so you can advance and occupy what god wants you to do and it's the same thing we're in a spiritual battle in our land that we live in right now if our forefathers could wake up great and look do you think george washington would say oh this is awesome you have playboy magazine that's what we meant by freedom of press naked people that isn't what he meant See, again, we laugh but it's true right don't you think those guys would roll over in their grave if they got up and said you do what you take people naked and photograph them you guys out of your mind come on somebody that isn't what they meant it's time for us to realize God has us here for such a time of this. We're a loving people, but we're not a silent people. Can I get an amen? There's still a whole mission field out there. There's things going all over. People engaging in acts and doing things that are wrong and doing things that are anti-God, but we still have hope. We are God's mouthpiece for the world. The church is. Christians. We're Bible-believing people with a message, guess what, of hope. Repentance forgiveness thank god that i heard that message and responded to it in my life it's still alive we do not have a message of hate might not always agree with it but it's not a message of hate we have a message of christ on the cross in isaiah chapter 40 you can look at 40 verse 1 if you want all of isaiah all the chapters the first half of the whole book of isaiah is god's judgment the second part is all about God's uh, repentance, uh, God's wanting the people to repent and what he wanted to do. He says in Isaiah 40, verse 1, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. The first half of Isaiah is about the judgment on Israel. The second about is all about the comeback. How many know God has a comeback for us? Can we get an amen? 
Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, we've got a comeback coming. Go ahead. In this passage of Scripture, it says the church is to be the comfort to all those who are lost and without hope. We are challenged by God to be the comfort for this fallen world. God still is with us. He loves us. And you know what? He's still a judge. I don't care what anybody does. Everything's going to end up standing before God, and God's going to judge it one way or the other. We are to still stand on the Word and on for His righteousness. Sometimes that's not easy. Sometimes you can lose friends over it. I hate to say it, but sometimes you can lose family members because you stand for Christ. They don't agree with it, you know. There's some things that happen, and it's like, what are you going to do? You have to have what they call a conviction in a relationship. When you have that relationship with Jesus, guess what? You stand for the righteous. Like when the lady in the bookstore yesterday was talking about her drinking, and I just said, well, no, I, I don't drink. Well, why not? I just well, I feel like the Holy Spirit's convicted me, so I never really did anyways. Even in my younger rock and roll days, this wasn't a thing I did. But I knew enough to not do things that God didn't want me to do because I was raised in the church, but I didn't always follow God. You know, I, I got 12 years old. I was told I didn't have to go with my grandmother to church anymore. And Brian went off the deep end, got in rock and roll, got kicked out of high school, finally ended up graduating at a Christian school, things that God had changed. But because I'm here for such a time as this. How about you? Come on, somebody. I'm not here by mistake. There's a reason I'm here. There's a reason. There's a reason you're here. There's a reason to make a righteous decision and to say, I'm going to stand for righteousness. We are still to stand on his word and for righteousness. That's what God all of heaven rejoices when a person gets saved. I mean, no, that's true. We've done door to door. When the young girl asks us at Burger King, she comes up to us and says, can I talk to you for a minute? She knew we were pastors. Said, yeah, she's out in the parking lot. You guys know the story. And she said, would you pray for me? My mom's in the hospital. I don't want her to die. I said, yeah. And then all of a sudden the Spirit of God said, ask her if she knows me. Have you ever received Christ? No. Would you like to? Yes. And she got saved in the parking lot of a Burger King. That was just about a year and a half ago, huh? And you know what? What a wonderful thing. Because we have we have a lady in Publix always say, how are you guys doing? And we run into one lady that's on fire, and we're having church. We're sitting there sometimes, what, 35 minutes in the aisle, and we're talking about Jesus. And when people walk by, we had a, we had a stock guy. We were there talking about it, and all of a sudden he turned around and said, you know, I like your conversation. I like your conversation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. You know why? People want to know about God. And you know what? The church has got a thing. We're not people. Hey, people think, oh, the church is a judge. And not. Listen, I'm not the judge. God is. I'm just a messenger to tell you what he said. And if you don't agree with it, that's fine. That's up to you. But that's what the word. And if I'm wrong, show me where I'm wrong. But I know one thing. I love the Lord. And God said you've got to love people. Two, what did Jesus say? The two best commandments hang on everything. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the others, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, love them. But sometimes love hurts when you speak the word. Paul just gave a quote. When the word came forward, you're mad at me because I spoke the truth. Isaiah 49, 40 verse 9. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the hill mountains of Jerusalem. You who belong to Good tidings. Lift up your voice. Come on with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. God challenges us to lift our voice and not be afraid and to bring good tidings. Now what is good tidings? Watch this. Good news. What is that good news? Jesus died for us and made a way for us to go to heaven. We are free from the bondage of sin. Come on. I've been free from the bondage. You know why I got free from the bondage of sin? Because of what Jesus paid the price for me. Sin does not no longer have reign over my body. Does that mean I can't sin? No. You can sin if you want to, but you don't have to be in bondage. If there's a bondage that's holding you, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, anger, fear, worry, because it always doesn't have to be a substance. It could be something internal, you know, inside. Whatever it is, God can set you free of all that. Golly, come on, man. And he does. He's a good God. And sometimes you have to battle through that. We, you know what? In our ministry, you know what the number one thing we see more than anything? People fighting depression. Depression's a real thing. If you've never done it, it's a real thing. And people hold on. Some people can't even leave their house because of depression. But God has a beautiful <clears throat> life ahead still, beautiful for you outside. 
beautifully enjoyed life. The enemy wants to keep you in that bed where you can't get up and take a shower because you're so depressed. Now, that doesn't mean circumstances might not bring that loss of a loved one. You know, you can go. Those things happen. But you don't have to stay there. Jesus will break those bondages, and he's come to set us free. We live in a free nation, but what about a free spirit inside? Because when Jesus comes in, he takes that load off my back and makes me free in the name of Jesus. Gives me a joy that's unspeakable that will get up and give you, give you life and give it more abundantly. When my wife was going through the illness, she had the, the, the physical uh, thing in her back where her, her uh, uh, disc blew out. And for six weeks, she wasn't getting out of bed. And I looked at her, and her dark circles were getting worse in her eyes. And she looked t- t- very tired and hard. And she said, you know what? I said, what? She was crying. She said, I'm sorry. on me. And she thought, you know, Paula, Paula's always up. I told you she dances in. I got videos to show her dancing in Walmart. I mean, dancing in public. I got it. So she, she's full of joy all the time. She likes that. But the problem was, oh, I said, no, we're not going to let that get on you. We pray against it. Get up, honey. What do we got to do to fight this? So we go to the doctor. We do what he's supposed to do. We keep speaking. No, you're not going to get on my wife. My wife's free in the name of Jesus. She's been washed by the blood of the lamb. Satan, you don't have a right to take that joy out of her heart. You're not going to do that. You're not going to take it on my family in the name of Jesus. You're not going to divide my family. There was a division between my son-in-law and daughter for a while over over working at the church. They separated because they didn't agree. So I said, you're not going to divide my family in the name of Jesus. God, you're going to heal. And it's healed. Can you... You can speak it and stand on it and quote the word in the name of Jesus. God's word is alive forevermore. Jesus died for us and made a way for us. God loves all his creation. We're never going to win the world if we're always angry at everybody and hateful toward everybody and mean toward everybody. You're never going to win the world. You've got to be nice. You've got to reach out. God tells us to lift up in Isaiah. Lift up your voice. Declare your Lord your God. Don't hold back. I can tell you right now, when you go home after service today, and we're, we're, I guarantee you there's more cars in driveways than there are in church parking lots. This morning, 9 o'clock, I'm driving, I, I had to go back to my house and I come back. There are people out jogging, riding the bikes, doing all that walk. And I, you know what I think to myself? I think now I don't know if they went to church on Saturday. I don't. I don't know. But I think a lot of them don't. You have a lot of people don't go to church. I think, what are you going to do when you die? You know, you know, here's our life right here. Eternity is like that guy had on that that uh, Reverend uh, Cho on on TV. He he took a rope and he drew just the end of it red, and he had this long white rope. He said, "This is your life." But here's eternity. <laughs> this is your life, and we worry about all in here when we need to be focusing on. What does Jesus want? And are we focused on eternity? Are we born again? Now, God wants you to live in joy. He wants you to have a nice house. He wants you to have food on your table. He wants you to be successful. He wants all these kind of things here. But the idea is this isn't the priority. The priority is where are you going to be when the clock strikes 12 and you're gone? Where's Tina Turner today? I don't know if she's saved. I don't know if she's lost. I don't know. But her life ended. When I was watching the Johnny Carson episode, Johnny's gone. But Johnny had a great thing. I don't know where Johnny is. None of us know that. So I ask you, where are we at in our relationship with Christ? We've come to be set free, but are we really free? Are we still in bondage as to what we think? No, we should be free in Christ and enjoy and walking in the joy. Isaiah 40, verse 12 says, Who has mer- measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure? Weighed the mountains in scales and the hills on balance. God holds the whole world in his hand. Come on, somebody. Somebody say amen. Where did I put my drink at? Oh, right here it is. All right. Yeah, that's what happens when you have sleep apnea. No, I'm just kidding. You know, I was talking to Josh when he came in. We, we, it, it's, it's very hot. But I, I could be mistaken, but I think the sun is 48 million miles. You might look it up. It's a long way away. But that heat is over 10,000 degrees, and it makes it here and makes it hot. But if it was any further, we wouldn't have life on the planet. And if it was any closer, we'd all be burned up. Who put that there? Come on. Go ahead, Lori. Come on. God. 
puts it right there. It just sits in this and doesn't even move. Just sits in outer space. It just burns. That's it. And here comes our planet in outer space. Just sort of makes its way 365 days. Right. How'd that get here? That didn't just happen like I dream a genie. Boom. It didn't happen. All right. Remember I dream a genie? For you young people, you might not. You go, boom. It didn't happen. That didn't happen. The creator who gave us freedom that saw when his world, his prized creation, who he made in the image of himself, had sinned and walked away in the Garden of Eden. Thank God that he said, the heel will crush the head of the serpent, it tells us in Genesis 3. It's talking about his son is coming back. I mean, coming to the earth. And Jesus came here in the likeness of man, walked this earth for over 33 and a half years, overcame all sin. And you know what he said? I've overcome so you can overcome. He gave us victory in the name of Jesus. We live in the greatest nation in the world, but we also have the greatest relationship of all in the world with Jesus Christ. Notice I didn't say religion, because mine's not a religion. It's a relationship with the King of Kings. And he's done so much for us. Why do we want to go back? We want to move forward. And God's given us the voice to go out and tell people about Christ. Hallelujah. When he sat there and says, Isaiah 40, verse 14 through 15, says this. With whom did he take counsel? And who's instructed him? Hey, who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? Who showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as a small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the aisles as a very little thing. Who tells God what to do? I always say, who tells God? Can, I'll never forget. I don't know if you guys ever knew who Dan Betzer was, but great oracle of the Lord at a first Fort Myers. This is a statement he said I never forgot. So the next time. We are a penny in God's hand, and he can spend us the way he wants. Come on, man. I'm a penny in God's hand. He can spend me any way he wants. Who in the world holds the thing? God. So when they make decrees from our government, I still serve a God that's over that decree. You better help me preach. Come on, somebody. He's in my life. You can't change how I feel. I can stand for righteousness and say, this ain't right, but I'm not going to be angry at everybody, but I am standing for righteousness. I'm a penny in God's hand. He can spend me any way he wants. In the same way God says these things will happen, don't lose heart. In the movie Patriot, anybody see the movie Patriot with uh, Mel Gibson? Was that not a cool movie, man? That was awesome, man. That was awesome. General Cornwallis could not believe that a bunch of farmers could beat his army from England. How could he beat the Redcoats? How in the world? These are guys that had nothing but muskets. Look, one-shot muskets. But these boys turned it around, and they were called, anybody remember what they were called? Minutemen. Minutemen, that's right. Does anybody know why they were called Minutemen? They could be ready in one minute. That's why they were called Minutemen. They were ready in one minute. Let me ask you, can you be ready in one minute when something happens? Do you know to drop to your knees, call on the king, know that what you can do, you can begin to speak things when it comes against you. Be ready in a minute. Do you know the word enough? The word is like our constitution that gave us, if you will, and it has all the good stuff in it for us and our benefits. Hallelujah. He's got it in there, and we can be free because of what he did. The British Army was destroyed by farmers, Minutemen that stood up. Minutemen. That's it. Do you have, does he have a picture to show? There it is. All right, look at that. There you go. That kind of guy right there, hundreds of them in our country, are the reason you and I can meet in this room right now. Come on. So we, we forget about that. But we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these men and these women that worked the joint, so to speak, stood up and said, how are we going to beat these trained soldiers that are coming over by the thousands and all marching and know what to do? No, ready, aim, fire, boom, they'd all shoot the same. They knew what to do. They had cannons and all that. We didn't have all that kind of stuff, but we had the muskets, and you had people who believed that they could win. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, now come on, there is liberty. Come on, man. Statue of Liberty stands out there. It says, bring your lame, your weak, your heartache. It stands out there, right? Well, God says, I gave you liberty through the cross. Come on, somebody. We have freedom through what Jesus did. 
the greatest life is to serve God and to be nice and to do what He Matthew eleven twelve says this from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven heaven suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. We've seen our country fall into a woke generation and stuff that's going on, antichrist stuff. We need to have our faith be stronger than ever before. We need to be stronger and planted firmly in the principles of the Bible than all the forces of hell that come against us. You've got to know the Word. Strong faith and freedom in Christ makes us willing and able to press right through the difficulties. Stop letting Fox News, CNN, TMZ upset you. Stop it. Start focusing on, maybe watch TV and focus on the victories we have in Christ. Things are happening. We need to stand for righteousness. But, but pray. Jesus said, if my people pray, that's what he told us to do. And turn and do what we got to do. Pretty simple. We've heard it. Strong faith and freedom in Christ makes us willing and able to press right through all those difficulties. And listen, faith comes by hearing the word of God. If all I'm putting in me is everything I disagree with or I watch and see turn around, I'm never going to be able to change. I got to speak the things of God and be able to say, Lord, I want to put inside me what you want me to have. So it says, fight the good fight of faith. That's a fight. God wants us to fight it. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Anybody in here free? Come on. Okay. Well, what are we to do and what are we to do with the freedom from? What are we, what are we free from? Number one, here it is. I believe we're free, we're, we have freedom from the power of sin. I just can't help myself. That's why I do it. Stop that. See, that means the God that lives in you is not bigger than the thing that's on the outside of you. God is big enough in you to have you overcome whatever addiction or thing, whether it's sexual immorality, lying, gossip, strife, drunkenness, whatever it is, God gives you the anointing to go. It's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We have the freedom from the penalty of sin. You know why? Because of what Jesus paid the price. How many are glad of that? I know I am. He paid for my price. Listen, when I fall, I can ask him to forgive me, and he's faithful and just to forgive me of all unrighteousness. Did you know that? Stuff. <clears throat> and we have freedom in Christ. Ladies, can you go up? I want to read. I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 5 again, where we started. I want to end with this. And I want you to follow along. Whether you have your Bible, which is in paper. Some of you have the paper. You have the book. Some of you have uh, your, your, your uh, phone. I don't care which way you do it. And I want to read something. It's in Galatians chapter 5. For those that are watching, I'm going to start at verse 1. And I want us to look at this letter from Paul. I want you not just to look at it as just, oh, it's a good scripture I can stand on. God anointed him with the Holy Spirit to write this in the Bible. So this is the word of God. And watch what he says, because he talks about freedom. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. All the way through, we're going to read. Stand therefore, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And if I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempted to be justified by the law, you've fallen from grace. Let me just tell you what he just said. Okay, I get it. Circumcision, uncircumcised guy. God wanted you to do it. Some of you didn't do it. And if you think you're better because you did it, you're not understanding that Christ died for you. You're falling from the grace. You're under grace. You're going back to the law. You're becoming a debtor. You're being entangled once again by certain things that you have to do. But I came to, to fulfill the law, not to destroy it. It's what, what, what Jesus said. But watch what he says. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor or uncircumcision avails anything, but faith, love. Let's pray. 
He's trying to say, you can do the Ten Commandments. He wants you. I get it. But that's not what saves you. The law's not what's going to save you. He, was serving. he says, it's through faith in Jesus Christ that saves you. Then he goes, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Because the Galatians were falling back to doing the things that they were taught under the Pharisees. So he said, he did. This persuasion does not come from him who called you. Don't you know a little leaven leavens the whole lump? I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. In other words, whoever's putting this pressure on you, bud, and say, no, you got to do this, this, this. No, it's not faith in Jesus. You've got to do like we've been taught. But, but he said, I don't know who's bothering you, but he'll be judged. It's not good that they're trying to force you to do this because Paul's right. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, what do I still? why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who troubled you would even be cut themselves off. What he's saying? He said, even if I started telling you that stuff, I should be cut off, man. So here's what he goes. He goes, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Everybody say liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if, watch this, if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. Well, you believe that. I believe this. I believe that. I don't believe that. You're arguing about different beliefs. Jesus is the Lord and the answer. He's saying, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So now he talks about that. Watch. For the works of the flesh are evident. Here they are. So he's trying to let them know you're free, but here's what happens when you get back in the flesh. He said, here they are. They are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness. The first are all have to do with sexual impurification. First four. Then he goes on to say, idolatry sorceries look at look at hatred Mm. contentions jealousy outburst of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envies murderers drunkenness revelries of these like of which i told you beforehand just as i told you in the time past those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You guys are free. Quit getting tangled up. But he says this. But the fruit of the Spirit doesn't say the fruits. Plural. Fruit. Not fruits. Fruit. Because all this is in God. Love. Joy. Peace. How many got those three in their life right now? If there's one hurting, you know what? God wants to restore it. But look at this one. This is the one that's sometimes hardest. Long-suffering. You keep praying and nothing changes. You keep praying and nothing changes. You're praying for something, nothing changes. You're holding on, nothing changes. Change is coming, Jack. Hold on. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. See, that long-suffering is right between peace and kindness. (laughs) All right, faithfulness gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another, and envying one another. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. That's why I say, I'm in the right time, I'm in the right place. Come on, somebody. I'm here for such a time as this. Stand for righteous, walk in love. For love is the reason that God has sent us here. How many know you're in the right place at the right time? Can you say amen? For those who are even watching, where's your relationship with Christ? 
You've been set free. Don't let all these things that we see and we hear about drive us oh, so angry. I don't like some of the things I see. And if you ask me my opinion, I'll be quick to tell you. Because I believe I, ha- I, well, I believe I have an obligation to. I think we all to stand for righteousness, but to be nice. My listen, nobody's going to stand before Brian Royer and and my and he'll say, "Oh, he died for you." Nope. I'm just a man. I'm not God. You're not God. He's God. But He's given us to stand for righteousness, to be an example on the earth, to a dying world that's going to hell in a handbasket. And to stand for right, I've been been here for such a time. I could have been born in 1776, but God chose not to. I'm born now. I could have been a minute man. You could have been a minute man. We could have been born back then. I think to myself, what they do for a toothache? They had no pain meds. Look how how'd they pull it out. I got it. We laugh, but you know what they do when they got infection? Sometimes they had to cut it off. They take alcohol and they run it on it. They cut the. There were things. You and I are living in a good time. But we're also living in a bad time where we see the world thing. But thank God we have medical technology to help us a little bit. Can we get an amen? How they live back then? What? what you ever think? I think this. What? If, what if George Washington was born again and sat right here and he stood up and he looked up and said, "What's that big metal thing in the air flying right there? What in the world is that?" He would think that he'd freak him out. Oh, those are people up there in an airplane. What's an airplane? It takes me from Miami to Seattle, Washington, in about nine hours. No way. They have no idea. We are here with all the technology to preach the gospel. We've got enough books to tell us how to walk right. We've got every author that's written about every kind of thing. Okay. We've got every kind of technology that we can use. We've got the computer, the internet, Facebook. We have telephone. We have anything we want. We have a lot going on for us right now. We can win the world for Jesus Christ. If a virus can shut down a world in four and a half months and spread, how far powerful is our God one by one telling people of Jesus we could change the world radically if we stood up for it and did it and would stand for righteousness. And we're free. So let's quit holding back and saying, well, this world is lost. It's going to hell in a handbasket. God said it's in His will that none should perish but all come to repentance. We're the, we're the mouthpiece for the King. And I'm set free. That's why, man, I, you, when I go, you guys have known me for a long time. The joy of the Lord's my, I just, I love God. Does everything go right? No. Do you ever get down? Yeah. But I know that he's with me. Yeah. I don't like seeing my wife when she's going through all that. But guess what? Then she got a report. No more operation. I don't believe she's operating. I believe she's got nerve damage down her foot. Well, how many know God can change that nerve damage? And you know what? She could be sitting, she's up there, and she likes to sing for the king. She likes to go out. We went out, we went out. You know what she loves to do? She loves to spend money at thrift stores. Oh, I got another yay right here. You and her get along great. She goes out. Well, can I I tell you something? Watch this. Would you stand up, please? Come on. And then I'll, I'll, I'll let Facebook go. Come on, stand right up here. Stand in the middle. Would you twirl around? That's a thrift store buy for five bucks. Doesn't it look good on it? Come on. <laughs> but you know what? Let me tell you how she shops for that. This is where I want to end. She's limping a little bit because It still hurts down her foot. But she didn't stay at home because she's free in Christ. And you know what? God bless her. And you know what? Sometimes you don't even think about it anymore. You just do what you have to do and say, I'm going to make it with Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to lose hope on what I see on the news. I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm going to stand for righteous. I'm going to pray for my country. And we're going to turn this thing around. For those who have been watching by Facebook, I want to thank you for joining with us. I pray you have a happy 4th of July. If you don't know Jesus Christ, just say this. Just say, God, forgive me of my sin. Jesus, come into my life. I am a sinner. I need to be saved. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that you died for me, and I believe you rose for me. And I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to let you know you became born again. Welcome to the family of God. But you got to get placed in a church somewhere. You've got to find a house. There's some believers you need to get around and watch what God will do. And be patient in your growth with Christ. You know, when you were born as a baby in the flesh, you didn't know how to walk. You didn't know how to talk. You knew how to scream and holler, but you didn't know how to do those things. Same thing with Christ. When you get born again, be patient. God will raise you up in time. And you know what? God has you here for such a time as this. Till next week, God bless Pastor Brian.